guys, welcome back to another dungeon. On today's show, we're going to be playing Portal, the uncooperative cake acquisition game. It's a beautifully packaged game. It's a lot of fun to play. I was quite surprised, because being the pessimist that I am, whenever someone makes a board game of a video game or something else, I'm like, uh, is it going to be a cash-in? Are they going to do a good job? But it turns out Portal's fantastic. The humour from the game can be seen throughout the entire thing, even the picture on the back of the box. Um, and to read the back of the box. Hello and welcome to this Aperture Science board-based cake acquisition enrichment activity. Perfect for two to four test subjects with the intelligence and luck to ensure the failure of the other one to three test subjects. Pick a card, get some cake, and compromise every moral you thought you possessed in order to survive the fast-paced, highly lethal test environment surrounded by the bitter, tear street faces of those you used to call friends. <laughs> So the whole the whole game, the concept of the game, the um, the way you play it, everything it, it's it's very portal, which I know sounds stupid, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I've managed to make a unique game that's fun to play, um, an original, and it feels like it belongs in the world of portal. Um, so out of the box, you get um, a whole bunch of test subjects. So at the start of the game, each player is assigned their um, favourite colour. Um, actually, there's a little excerpt you're meant to read at the start of the game. Here we are. So this will explain. Uh, hello humans, now that you've... Oh, sorry, attention. Please read the following in an authoritative and slightly condescending yet excited tone to the other players. Hello humans, now that you've been awakened from your covert hibernation vault, it's time to resume testing. To motivate the best results, you've been divided into divisions and assigned a jumpsuit in your new favourite colour. The best performing division will be forever remembered in the history book. I'm writing entitled Team of Rivals, the scientific genius of, insert jumpsuit colour here. Good luck. So basically what it is, is it's an uncooperative board game, meaning it's competitive. The uh, Aperture Science Laboratory is a constantly evolving board made up of all these pieces here. Um, players must move their test subjects through, um, through the Aperture Science Laboratories, collecting as much cake as they can. The game ends when either someone has all their cake incinerated or they have no test subjects left in the Aperture Science Laboratories. When that happens, the person who has the most um, cake is deemed the winner. Um, and there's actually a funny thing for if there's a tie, but I'll read that out later. And let's, oh, here we are. I opened it right up at the same, right place. To settle a tie, the tied player with the most test subjects in the laboratory is declared the winner. If any divisions are still tied, they may appeal their cases in 10 words or less to the other divisions or anyone nearby and put it up to a vote. None of these 10 words may contain the letter E. So, yeah, there's going to be a winner. Anyway, it's a really, really fun game. Uh, the components are really well made. Uh, it feels good. It's fun to play. Actually, the only thing that isn't great about it is these pieces don't clip together very well. Some of them are too loose. That particular one, well, it's not too bad. You can see some of them sort of clip together. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the game's broken up into a whole bunch of stuff. You've got your test subjects, your pieces of cake... You've got a Gladys piece, a companion cube, and a uh, turret. You've got a couple of portals. Um, some quick reference cards, one for each colour. With the instructions for the portal gun on the other side, which I'll get into later. And a whole bunch of um, aperture and character cards. So on one side you've got the aperture um, instructions that... You know, when you play a card, that's what you activate. And once they're played, you play them face down, and the characters... Oh, it's over here. And the characters um, have a persistent effect throughout the game. It's all stuff I'll explain in a second when I'm running through the rules, but I just wanted to give you sort of a, a rough rundown of all the pieces in the game. As I said, really, really, really fun game. Um, and very funny. I'll turn the camera down, and I'll just get on with explaining it. So when you start the game, the first thing you're going to want to do is set up Aperture Science Laboratories. To do that, you shuffle all these test uh, chamber pieces and then you place them in three rows of five chambers, like so. Now 
These three remaining tiles are just removed from the game. They're not used this game. Now this is considered to be Aperture Science Laboratories. This is called the New Edge, and this is where all new chambers will appear, all test subjects appear, and all cake appears. This is the old edge, and this is the edge that will be destroyed. But I'll get into more destruction and uh, creation of, of chambers as we go along. Needless to say, this will be a cons constantly moving, like a conveyor belt board, um, so it changes as the game progresses. Next you grab the, um, don't know what you call it, the incinerator we'll call it. The incinerator uh, place card, place it near the table, shuffle all the aperture uh, slash character cards and place them with the aperture side, which is the test chamber side, facing up right there. Each player then takes a uh, coloured portal gun and all their associated coloured cake pieces and test subjects. Like blue and purple. They then place one test subject at the top and the bottom chamber on the new edge and two in the middle. Remembering that if at any time um, one of these players has all their people out of the chamber, then it's considered game over. This isn't cake that they're holding, by the way. Um, I'll get into more cake later. But the other way that a player can lose the game is if all their cake has been incinerated. Again, I'll go into that in more detail later. So, forget that I said nothing right now. Get my trap shut. Oh. You then place the... Uh, Rude time to be calling me. Bad luck. I'm making a video. You'll have to wait. You place the GLaDOS uh, token, the portal token, and the companion token nearby. And you place the um, uh, the two portal tokens at the top and bottom chamber on the old edge. And then, pretty much, you already start playing the game. Uh, so the person who starts the game is the person who last ate cake. I'm playing as all four players for this example, so let's pretend that the person, purple person here is the person who last ate cake, um, as I probably ate cake more recently than myself. The very first step is the deploy phase. What that involves is if you happen to have any aperture cards in your hand, you can have a maximum of three at any one time, um, you can choose to play them, as many as you want in any order. I don't have any cards in my hand at the start of the game, so we're going to skip that step for now, and we'll come back to it later on. The actions on the card um, and those sorts of things will make more sense then as well. The next step you can do is that you can move your um, uh, move your test subjects. Sorry, not the next step you can do, the next step that you must do. You must move some test subjects. So the way you do that is you first pick a chamber, say we're playing as yellow, Okay, we pick this chamber here. Now I can move any or all of my test subjects in that chamber. Um, so say I want to move one, I can move him there to an adjacent chamber. There to an adjacent chamber, or there. Or I could move two to there, two to there, two to there. I can't move one to there and one to there. I can only do one move. If we happen to have this portal gun in there, then those two chambers are considered adjacent. So I could move that... Um, right over to there. They're not though, so I'll move it back. If you decided to move just one uh, test subject, you get a bonus. You can either draw the top aperture card into your hand, or you can add a new test subject to the board. Now the new test subject is always added to one of the three um, new edge chambers and you can just pick and put them in. There's no limit, by the way, to how many test subjects can be in any one of these chambers. So you don't have to worry that, you know, the chamber looks like it's getting a bit overcrowded or something like that. Let's say for this example, I'm going to move one, and I'm going to take that card. That ends my move phase. The next phase is to activate 
one of the old edge chambers. So that's one of that, these three on the old edge. To do that, the player picks uh, up Gladys and goes, I'd like to activate that chamber. Um, to be honest, when we play, we just say, I want to activate that chamber. Putting Gladys there is... I mean, it's nice to have the token, but as you get on, as you get on in the game, if you've got a few things in the room and you're trying to put that on there and then read the... Yeah, it just becomes a bit messy. But anyway, that's what you're meant to do. You're meant to put the, the token on the thing to say, I'm going to activate that chamber. When you activate a chamber... What you do is you count the number of test subjects in that room and then distribute the rewards as indicated by these icons on the wall of the chamber. So if we had these three guys here and we chose to activate that chamber, nobody would win because we all have a majority. If purple had two, purple would win because purple has the most test subjects. If purple and yellow had two but blue had one, nobody would win that room uh, because there's a tie for whoever comes first. So there has to be a clear majority uh, for someone to win win a room. When they win a room, you basically just give out these rewards. So there are five, five reward tokens. The first one is this blue uh, person. So in this case, purple one, um, they would be able to take a purple uh, test subject and put it in, say, that room, any room on the new edge of their choice. Then there's two cake tokens. So what they can do is they can take two pieces of cake and put them in, say one there and one there, any edge on the room. Now this is important. At the moment, purple now has two pieces of cake in the test chambers. What that means is that if the game ended now, remember the game ends if all someone's test uh, cakes things are incinerated or they've got no test subjects left if the game ended now purple would be the winner because they have the most cake uh, the other tokens there's this one which is the portal turret you can put that in any room of your choice hey guys this is future post recording dave i actually got my companion cubes and my turrets mixed up here what i should say is that you can move the turret to any adjacent chamber if there is no turret in the uh laboratory at the time you first draw the card uh activate the chamber then you place it on the any one of the three chambers on the new edge of the board so I put it in that one, and it immediately kills every test subject in that room. Uh, when a test subject is killed, they go into the player's hand. They don't um, get removed from the game. So you've got a, a constant number of test subjects that you can bring back into the chamber to help you win and, and, and proceed. The other icon is the aperture icon here. If you um, activate a chamber that has the aperture icon, that lets you pick up an extra aperture, uh, um, yeah, aperture card. Now, if you have, if that brings your hand up to four, you must discard down to three, and you discard by turning it face up like that. I'll run through that in a second. The last icon here is the companion cube icon. Uh, in much the same way as the turret, the player can pick the companion cube put it on any chamber other than the one you've just activated and um, its effects take place. When dunk, when a test subject is in a room with a companion cube and that room is activated, that test subject or any test subjects in that room can't reap the rewards of the room because they're enamoured with the, the companion cube, which if you've played the game you'll appreciate is uh, quite clever. <laughs> Just put these back. It's, no, it doesn't really matter. Let's pretend that our board looks like this. There. So once you've chosen to, um, once you've finished uh, doing the rewards, you must recycle the chamber. What this involves is removing the chamber from the board. All test subjects in that chamber die, which means that they go back into the player's hands. Um, and this chamber is then flipped and then placed onto the new edge of the board. It can be placed on any one of the three things with one restriction. If, when you remove a chamber, 
So I know it won't look like this because there's not enough pieces. So you remove this chamber here, you recycled that chamber. If there are only two on any one row, that chamber must be joined to that row. You can't have less than three um, uh, horizontally at any one time. Furthermore, if you had, say, a situation like that, let's pretend that these were down here, if they clicked in properly, it's a real nuisance. I think I'm just gonna have to get a file and sort of file them down a bit, make them a bit better. Um, if you had a situation like this, and say you wanted to recycle that chamber, if you recycled that chamber, as you can see, that would leave this one hanging in limbo. You are not allowed to recycle a chamber that, um, oh, sorry, you're, allowed to, you're not allowed to activate a chamber that would leave another chamber hanging. So in the previous step, step three, if you were, if you wanted to recycle that, you'd have to um, activate that, recycle it, and then next turn, um, if that chamber was still there, do it then. Does that make sense? Sorry about that. That was probably a roundabout description. Okay, so say that was purple person's turn. Um, they'd take, yeah, um, what's the name of? Oh, sorry, one thing I forgot. When you recycle a chamber, if you recycle a chamber, say, um, let's put these back a bit like that. Say you're going to recycle this chamber here, and it currently has the blue portal and the turret in it, or the companion cube, it doesn't matter. When you recycle it, you take it off, get rid of all the test subjects, flip it, put it over here, and all these go with it. They stay in the recycled test chamber. That's important to know. Uh, when you're activating as well, you don't have to pick a chamber that has anybody in it. You can pick a chamber that's got no one in it. In fact, at the start of the game, you'll pretty much have to. That's in addition to moving your pieces. That's one way of getting everyone sort of closer to the edge. If you get to a point where there's a bit of cake in the last chamber, so say there's say that situation and blue player's playing and blue player decides to recycle this chamber here. So what they do is first you do the rewards, right? So blue player gets two people, he puts them on there and blue player gets a bit of cake and he puts it, say, in there. Then all the test subjects in the, the thing are killed, return to the hand. Now with cake, if there's any cake in there, it's incinerated which means it's permanently removed from the game. Not permanently, you don't have to throw it in the bin. Just removed from this game. <laughs> um, that's the way that you um, sort of can get a, a, a more permanent upper hand on your, your competitors. So you want to get your cake into the, uh, into the lab, but you don't want to have too much cake in there too early, or there's a risk that um, someone might trash your cake. Um, now the other thing to note is when you're um, in the move phase, if you have a character there with a bit of cake, they are able to move and carry cake with them. So if you're getting a bit of cake near this edge, you can actually carry it back. Or if there's, say, a portal, you could, like, you could carry it back all the way to the start. And that's an important way of um, protecting your cake. Okay, so saying that was blue person's turn, now it's a uh, yellow person's turn. Now just say yellow person had these cards in their hand. So their first stage is to deploy. Okay, the first card we've got here is incinerator. Choose a player with more cake in the laboratory than you and incinerate one of their cake slices. Not bad. Turret, move the turret coat token to an adjacent chamber. It's not bad. Uh, earn one cake slice and deliver it to the chamber at the new edge of the laboratory. So, who did I say it was? Yellow. Say we're the yellow person now. Okay, that's not very good because the oh, that person would be dead if the turret was in that chamber. Say, say the turret was in this chamber here. Okay, they might go, okay, well first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play my turret card and move that into an adjacent chamber there which kills off these guys. Then you'll notice after I played the card, I placed it face down. Now on the back is a persistent effect. In this case, it's cake core. Once at the start of each player's turn, they may move one of their cake slices to any chamber. So what that means is from now on, at the start of each person's turn, 
they can move one of them until something else is played which voids it. There's only one persistent effect in play at any time. When you're choosing which of your aperture cards to play, it's important to make sure you flip them over and see what the, the negative sides are as well. So say the incinerator, choose uh, a player with more cake in the lab than you and incinerate one of their cake slices. But the character uh, persistent effect is Cave Johnson. To earn cake from an activated chamber, all test subjects in that chamber must be the same color. So that, that would be a great um, effect to have if you were the person with the most cake in the lab at the moment and you were, you know, trying to force the end of the game. Uh, this cake one, um, earn one cake slice and deliver it. Uh, once at the start of each player's turn, they may choose to incinerate one of their cake slices to earn two aperture cards. I don't know why you would do that. Um, yeah, you'd, you'd really want to have the, the, the card that's up on top of the deck I suppose. Hey guys Future Dave here again. One thing I mentioned earlier on but uh, didn't mention at this part of the video and probably should have touched on again was the fact that during the deploy phase you are able to play as many of your aperture cards as you wish. So how this comes into effect here is because say you wanted to play the cake card but you didn't want the Rick effect. Um, you could play that card and immediately play another aperture card that would then have the character or the persistent skill overlay it. So a better example would probably be this. Say you've got this card that has the uh, Cave Johnson skill on the back. So to earn cake from an activated chamber, all test subjects in that chamber must be the same colour. Now this is an effect you don't really want to be a persistent effect, so you want to get rid of it. But you have the cake card which has the Rick effect, which isn't a very good effect, but it's up to the player whether they want to do that or not so it doesn't really affect anything what you could do is you could play the card that has the cave johnson um character effect first and then play the other one which has the rick card effect second and then that basically negates the first anyway back to the video the other thing you can do on your turn is you can activate your portal gun whoops we're yellow person so the way that works is basically you can say say you want to uh, action you you want to use the portal gun you get to play this card ignoring the aperture side effects so now we've got that cave johnson effect and what we can do is uh, we can place these two portal tokens wherever we want so if we were in a situation where we were like this uh, the yellow player so let's pretend actually like this we might choose to sacrifice that card place the portal token like so and then on our move we can move carrying one piece of cake back here and of course because we moved one character we can either draw a card or we can get an extra test subject into the thing but more importantly we chose to sacrifice one of our cards to move the portal and create an avenue for us to save a bit of our cake now when carrying cake, one thing I forgot was, say I had two pieces of cake in here, and I had two test subjects. I can carry one piece of cake per test subject. So if there's three pieces of cake in there and two test subjects, out of luck. Sorry, no dice. Um, if there were three test subjects and two bits of cake, I could either, you know, I could move one and take one bit of cake, I could move three and take two bits of cake, or whatever I want. The other thing is, when this... Um, stack of cards is emptied you shuffle these cards leaving the persistent effect you just shuffle them and place them face up there again which of course um, keeps things flowing and that's pretty much it so your goal is to make sure that you have test subjects in the game at all times so sometimes that might mean if you're say you're purple and you've only got one left you might choose to move one person just to keep um, just to keep you know adding people to the game because at the moment if the game ended and someone recycled well they can't recycle that so someone recycled that um, then the yellow person would win because they have the most pieces of cake so your goal is to incinerate other people's cake by getting it to the end and, and force the game that way, or force the game by having all the people left, and yeah, that's it. I've just pretty much said what I said at the start. That was kind of dumb.
Anyway, it's a really good game. I'll try to get some people together and we'll do a, uh, a demonstration game so that you can all uh, laugh at the mistakes that I'll mention in the comments and uh, <laughs> hopefully we won't make any mistakes. It's a pretty straightforward game, very easy to play, uh, surprisingly fun and um, yeah, really fun. Enjoy. If you do happen to play, let us know what you think in the comments below. Keen to hear what everyone else thinks of the game. See you later. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. Aperture science. We do what we must because we can. For the good of all of us, except the ones who are dead. But there's no sense crying over every mistake. You just keep on trying till you run out of cake. Then the science gets done and you make a neat gun for the people who are still alive. Black Mesa.